a new way is really what it is. They're going to make a movie about us someday, and I, I think this might be in that movie. I okay, think this, you're this right. interview might be in that movie. <laughs>
me and Mike West left Geron because of that, even though I, I think cancer is an aging-related disease, so cure, aging is going to cure cancer. So I left. I started Sierra Sciences. Mike left. He, he started another company, uh, Van Cell Technologies. Uh, and it's been, we still collaborate. We've published together, things like that. But uh, that's how Sierra Sciences got started. And okay. that's the obsession of Sierra Sciences to do what Geron was originally intended to do. Okay. And what are you working on now when, when you leave Radfest and you go back to the lab? What, what are you working on? Raising funding. <laughs> okay. That, that's become, especially since COVID started. And because well, I used to have investors, I, I, in fact, one of them was just here a minute ago. Uh, but uh, I, I ended up having problems with I, I had 50 investors. I raised 33 million dollars, I think it was. Uh, but most of the investors were only interested in quick return on investments, and were steering us away from the main project. Uh, and then after we succeeded, all the trivia stuff they wanted us to do, they wanted to sell the company because it was so successful. And that would have destroyed me. I would have lost my intellectual property. I had no uh, non-compete contracts. I couldn't even start a new company. But some of the investors ging ginged up together and figured out a way to get me to have 100% control of the company without me spending a penny. And uh, so it's been like that ever since. And I've gotten my funding from th then on from go-to-market partners that were selling discoveries that we made on the market, and then we'd get a royalty. Then COVID came along, and they plummeted, and so now the now I'm I'm trying to get more funny. But my my research costs two million dollars a month. To wow! Do. And we haven't had that kind of funding since since COVID started. Okay. So right now we're just we're looking for with without losing control of the science. That's I you know I I'll take any investor that says you can do exactly what you want. I'm not going to stand in your way. And it would be stupid to stand in my way after all my success and so many other biotech blockbusters. Uh, and uh, But I haven't found somebody because everybody says, well, three years is too long. I want a quicker return on my investment. And yeah. if I had $130 million, I could have the aging process cured in three years. And I don't know too many people that disagree with that based on what we've already done. Right, I would agree. And it's really interesting, it, but you see that a lot with investors and they feel like they're also the brains. It's like, no, you're the money and the reason you're giving it to you is That's because- That's why cancer is not cured yet. Yeah. And I say that all the time in investment, I always say investors invest in the dream, but not the dream coming true. They invest in the guy who's got a cure for cancer, but then take that person or woman that's trying to cure cancer and completely redirect that person to something else and cancer as a result never gets cured. Yeah. And same thing with aging. Yes, so you already answered the next question I was gonna ask, but that was you know, what is the biggest challenge you're running into, if anything, that's causing you to slow down progress and it's funding. We know exactly <laughs> what to do. The science is very straightforward. We know how to cure aging in one to three years. It's funding is the only obstacle, not the science at all. And I wish more people would understand that because they think, well, we've been working on this for 20 plus years and we still haven't cured aging. It must be really hard to do. Well, it's not. It's really simple. We, we have a whole plan on how to do it. We just need the funding to do it. Okay, what do you see as the solution that's gonna pull that roadblock out of the way and the funding rolls in? Well, the solution, and, and you know, the, the more I work on this, the older I get and stuff like that, and I'm running out of time, you know, I wanna cure my own aging. So I have absolutely refused to talk to any investor that starts out the conversation, how long will it, will it be until I get my investment back? You know, that kind of stuff. Because we're, we're talking about a humanitarian return on investment, not a financial return on investment here. But what do you know? The investors are gonna make a gazillion dollars when we cure aging. Uh, but um, it's, not, it's gotta be the priority to do the cure. So I only talk to, and I, okay, so I've talked to a lot of multi-billionaires They've, they've sat in my conference room. They've landed their airplanes right across the street because I'm right across the street from the Reno, Nevada airport. Uh, and they walk over and they talk to me and they, they make me these offers. Oh, I'll give you $50 million for 80% of the company and things like that. And I say, no, okay, you're not going to get 80% of the company for $50 million. I need $130 million and you can have 49% of the company. I don't want anybody controlling the science. And so 
I've been, so it seems like all the well-known billionaires that I've talked to, and there's fewer you can name that I haven't talked to than I have talked to. Okay. I, I, I just find they all want a quick return on their investment, even though they already are filthy rich. Okay, so I've been focusing on unknown, ultra and high net worth individuals. And so I go around giving presentations and then by word of mouth, they hear about me, they watch my videos, and I'm talking to a few of them now, but their biggest problem is turning their wealth into liquidity. That is a really big struggle. And I, you know, there's, for every one person I'm talking to, there was 99 others that I completely were convinced there were charlatans or something like that. But I've, I've got a few that I've done a lot of due diligence on. They really do have the wealth. I've done the investigations of their gold mines or their oil wells and things like that. They do have the wealth, but converting it into cash is a real struggle. Um, and it's like banks, central banks all over. The, I've, I've learned a lot about money and stuff like that just from talking to these guys and hearing about their struggles but i'm just hoping that one of them comes through and you know every week they they say i think we got it figured out and then next week they say well it didn't work out but we got it figured out for next week so i keep hearing this week after week and, and i'm going to be honest with you i've been talking to one person for six years wow okay, so, okay. But, but i i'm still very optimistic that one of these okay. people are going to come through and i say to myself what other choice do i have because I am not going to accept any other source of funding because I don't want to find myself 90 years old and realize I just spent an investor's money to make him more money, him or her more money, mm -hmm. without getting what I, without my cure for aging coming along. Okay. Well, on that point, you know, what other options are there? I know uh, you, we've talked before about Immortalis. And uh, you know, I'm happy that you're very excited about it enough so that you were willing to sign an that's, LOI to work with us. So, that's why so I signed an LOI. Thank you for I that. think this is. I think this might be the secret. So to to wrap up this interview, what do you see in Immortalis that it got you so excited that you wanted to jump in and be a part of it? Well, a new way is mm -hmm. really what it is. I I don't know if Immortalis is going to work, but I like the idea that it's offering me a new option here that I want to jump on and, I, and I'm going to help whatever I can to make it happen. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit back and let you do all the work. <laughs> I want to help as much as I can. But I think I think this is actually, in hindsight, could be when they're going to make a movie about us someday. And I, I think this might be in that movie. I okay, think this, right. this interview might be in that movie. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. Bill, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. So thank you very much. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll be talking more soon, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Well, keep it up for my sake. <laughs>